Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about how we treat and analyze two independent samples. Okay, so remember where we're at. We're doing these inference techniques, confidence intervals, hypothesis tests, all this stuff, and we're moving down this list. All right, we've got our, our one sample stuff here for mu and p. Right, mu is quantitative data, p is categorical data. Hopefully you've looked at before and you've got an idea what we do when we treat our data as matched pairs. Right now we're moving into two sample stuff. Right now matched pairs, remember it kind of comes in between these two sample techniques and one sample techniques. Remember the idea of matched pairs is we're taking two samples, pairing it down to one, and then essentially you just treat it like a single sample. Alright, now we're saying, what if we have two samples, but there is no relationship there. We can't match individuals up. Right? These samples are completely random and completely independent. Right? That's how we're treating these two samples now. So we're treating them as two separate samples. All right, each of these samples will then have their own sample mean, their own sample standard deviation, maybe even their own sample size. Right? Both of these samples, they don't even have to be the same size. Sample stuff. So let's think back to one sample stuff. All right, we know how to treat all that. We know kind of our logic, our thought process when we're analyzing means. All right, so remember, we don't know what that sample mean is. We're trying to estimate it. All these things, the central limit theorem, the T distribution, all of these ideas apply. All right, but now we're going to apply that sort of times two here. All right, say we have two samples. Each of these samples may have their own come from different populations. They may have their own population means, their own population standard deviations. All right, so we're going to... We're going to look at these two groups, look at the difference between the groups, right? So our parameter of interest now is going to be mu1 minus mu2, the difference in these two groups. Okay, so if before we've used x bar, right, for a single sample, x bar to try to estimate mu, now I'm going to try to use x bar 1 minus x bar Two to estimate mu one minus mu two, or the difference in these means. Okay, so we got to think about now. So here, here my point estimate. My point estimate is now x bar one minus x bar two. So we got to know well, what does the sampling distribution of x bar one minus x bar two look like? All right. So say so. Let's start by assuming we have normal populations. Remember, that's usually the easiest way. To, to look at these ideas. Right? The normal distribution is easy to work with. So something like height is typically normally distributed. So say we've got the height of males normally distributed with its specific sample mean or with its specific population mean and population standard deviation. We've got the height of females with its specific mean and specific standard. Okay, so I simulated two sampling distributions here one from the, the population of males, one from the population of females, both of these with a thousand samples of size 10. All right, so pretty small in here, but remember both of these populations are normal, so we can assume normality of the sampling distribution. All right, so this sampling distribution should look something like this. This sampling distribution should look something like this. So remember what we're looking for we want to see what is the sampling, we know what the sample distribution of x bar 1 looks like. We know what the sampling distribution of x bar 2 looks like. We know that it, they're both normal, we know their means, we know their standard deviation. What does the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 actually look like? I'm going to be taking this top distribution and subtracting this one. So what do we get? All right, maybe we could call this the, the difference distribution. So if I take that second distribution, subtract it from the first, what do we get? In other words, basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking one normal random variable and I'm subtracting another normal random variable. All right, so if I take one normal, subtract another normal, what do we get? So let's look at at that simulated sampling distribution. Remember what we want to look for? The shape, specifically, is it normal? What does the center look like? What does the spread look like? Now remember, center-wise, 
Okay, here's if it's accurate, if a statistic is accurate, the center of its sampling distribution should be right around our parameter of interest. All right, so remember our parameter of interest now is mu1 minus mu2. Okay, so that's what we want to see if it's accurate. Spread-wise, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But again, a big thing was for spread, it usually depends on the sample size. As n gets bigger, our spread gets smaller. Okay, so here's our difference distribution of the difference in these two normal random variables. And looks like it's normal as well. All right, so let's think about the, the shape. I mean, the shape's pretty obvious, looks pretty normal. Let's think about the center, though. All right, theoretically, if it's accurate, our center should be somewhere right around 69 minus 64, or 5. Looks like, okay, here's here's 4.8, here's 5 right in there. So looks looks pretty accurate. All right, the standard error is this, so actually calculating it from the numbers. And what we'll find is the standard error for the difference distribution of two normal random variables is this quantity. Basically just adding together so we know the standard error is this for a single random variable, sigma over root n. All right, so if I just put two of those together, I come up with this. All right, so let's let's formalize all this. So here again, remember in our example, we were assuming both populations were normal. Not just one's normal, but both are normal. That would mean to be able to assume the central limit theorem for two groups, right? We need n1 and n2 greater than 30, right? So central limit theorem is telling us a linear combination of two normal random variables is also itself linear. In other words, a normal minus a normal leaves us with another normal. All right, what are the parameters? Centered at mu1 minus mu2, standard error of this. Okay, so remember when we are, so we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about analyzing matched pairs, but remember when we've got two groups of data, typically what we're looking for is some sort of difference in the groups. All right, so I usually want to, well, whenever I analyze anything, right, I want to look at it visually first. And a nice way to compare two groups, it just quick, easy way, is just a comparative box plot. All right, so kind of see what I have going on there. All right, but remember, when we're looking at two groups, we usually don't go with a confidence interval first, right, because usually we're looking for a difference. So we want to first run a hypothesis test to see, okay, is there a difference? And then, great, if I find a difference, let's follow that up with a confidence interval to estimate it. Okay, so let's think about what our test statistic is. We know what a test statistic looks like. If I can assume normality, assume the central limit theorem holds, right, our test statistic will look something like this. I'll be observing values of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. I'll be testing against some claim value here with my standard error in the denominator. All right, so pretty straightforward setting that up. But we know, in practice, not very likely that we know these values. So therefore, not very likely that we know z. So what about for small samples, right? When we can't assume normality of both populations, if we don't know their variances, maybe our, our sample sizes are small. Right, again, we know for one, one sample mean that's where our t distribution comes in. Same thing here. All right, so we'll use our t distribution. All right, just a side note that we'll expand on later in the, our Beyond the Basics video. Right now, we're assuming the variances, since we don't know sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared, we're assuming the variances of these two populations are different. Okay, and... We need to, when we're, when we're going through, so remember a normal minus a normal was normal? Well, in order for a t random variable minus a t random variable to be a t, right, we still need to meet our assumptions for both of these. So I need to check my t assumptions, skewness, outliers, 
All right, I need to check those assumptions for both groups in order to be able to assume that this applies here. All right, so our test statistic, same form, but now it's a t-test statistic instead of sigmas, we're estimating them with s. Again, we're assuming right now that the variance of these two groups are different. So what are our hypotheses for a two-sample test going to look like? Well, remember our parameter of interest is mu1 minus mu2. And in general, if we're looking for just a difference in these two groups, our claimed value is most of the time just, just going to be zero. Right? So this is my parameter of interest now, mu1 minus mu2, equal to our claim. Our claim is zero. A more compact way of writing that is like this, mu1 minus equal to mu2. We assume, if we're trying to show that there's a difference in these groups, we assume to begin with there is no difference. Right? We still have all three options that we usually have if we're just looking for a general difference, two-tailed. If I think one group is bigger than the other, it could be right-tailed or left-tailed. All right. Now, again, notice there's two ways that I've been showing you that here to write these hypotheses. It could either be written like this. That kind of goes along with what we've seen in the past, right, that our parameter of interest is equal to some claim value. But again, a much easier way of writing things would be something like this, right, that either group 1 and group 2 are just generally different, that group 1's mean is bigger than group 2's, or that group 2's mean is bigger than group 1's. Alright, so that's kind of the basics for a hypothesis test for two groups. What about a confidence interval? Well, we know our general format. Right, we're usually going to use T for two groups. Right, we're not going to find a whole lot of context where we can assume normality of both groups. We're usually going to be using T. Right, so our confidence interval should look like this. Point estimate is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus or minus T critical value plus or times our standard error. So now maybe the next question is, well, if I'm using T, what do I do with degrees of freedom for two groups? Okay, so for now, the easiest thing to do is just use what we would call our conservative estimate of degrees of freedom. Okay, our conservative estimate for degrees of freedom is just going to look at group one and group two and just use the minimum of those two. Okay, so for now, conservative estimate is easy enough, but if you want to go into this more, we'll, we'll look at this in the future. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time with an application of these.